when did rock and roll begin and uh, be noticed on the American musical scene? The history of rock and roll actually begins around 1951 with uh, Ike Turner's recording of Rocket 88. Oh. And it's ironic that uh, from 1951 till sometime in the late 60s, uh, Ike Turner was really not that popular in uh, uh, sort of uh, the mainstream of uh, American music or uh, international music going over to Europe and Japan and so forth. Uh, but the first real commercial recording of great popularity was in 1955, Bill Haley's Rock Around the Clock. So you think that really is what brought it to the front? The real explosion of rock and roll occurred in 1956, in September 1956, with the Ed Sullivan program. And some 89 million people watched that program, which is phenomenal when you think about the, the, the smaller population of America. Uh, I was glued to the television with my sister, and uh, uh, Elvis performed uh, Don't Be Cruel, uh, and Charles oh. Lawton was the, was, the, uh, was the presenter. Ed Sullivan was, uh, was ill that night, so Charles Lawton oh. substituted. Oh my goodness. But that was the most seminal event in, in rock and roll history, and it's well known among the musicians and the rock and roll fans like myself. Ed Sullivan did a lot for, for music and for musicians. Well, he was actually the catalyst for the, the expansion of uh, multiracial music, frankly. Uh, I remember seeing uh, Jackie Wilson was on many, many times. Uh, uh, James Brown made his first uh, uh, major appearance on network television in America. Uh, and that was uh, the beginning of uh, white kids like myself starting to understand what was happening at the Apollo Theater in the Chitlin Circuit from the South. Yeah. One of my favorite recordings is James Brown live at the Apollo. We used to actually memorize the introduction. <laughs> How would you define rock and roll and what, it's, what sets it apart from the, the big band era? Well, actually it's the electric guitar that was the, the, the key to the transition from uh, the Duke Ellington, uh, the Benny Goodmans and, and, and the large bands. Uh, Growing up in New England, we had a number of those uh, a number of those venues that those bands used to come through. My my parents used to see uh, Duke Ellington, uh, Benny Goodman, and so forth in their uh, in their travels. But the smaller the smaller towns couldn't afford these large bands. Yeah. So how would they uh, fill a, mm -hmm. a, a dance hall with music? And the electric guitar became that vehicle. And uh, it was the uh, a drum kit, uh, an electric guitar, an upright bass and possibly a keyboard, possibly a piano that maybe roll out from yeah, a gymnasium yeah, and some yeah, little yeah. upright piano. Uh, and that was, the, that was the core of that kind of, um, uh, that kind of music. It was still dance music. But as things evolved, and we took the upright bass into the electric bass, that's the, that's the foundation of modern rock in the late 60s. Jimi Hendrix, Cream, all these power trios with just a lead guitar, bass guitar, and drums. How did Les Paul play a part in this? Well. Les Paul became an extraordinary innovator. He was uh, one of the first uh, uh, wide uh, practitioners of echo mm -hmm. and multi-track recording. Uh, Les Paul was very close with Alexander Ponyatov, who was the founder of Ampex, mm -hmm. who was uh, uh, an audio uh, recorder maker and uh, ultimately became the inventor. His firm ent invented the videotape recorder. Charlie Ginsburg, Ray Dolby, and so forth entered the, uh, invented the videotape recorder. But Les was uh, 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 very um, technically minded as an artist. You know, a lot of a lot of uh, uh, creative, artistic type people aren't that interested in the technology. But Les Paul was a different case. Mm -hmm. He really enjoyed electronics and what these uh, multi-channel tape recorders could do. And he pushed Ampex into multi-channel tape recording and uh, these kinds of echo effects that became so popular with those uh, uh, Les Paul Mary Ford recordings. And, and also Gibson guitar too. Oh well, yeah, well the Gibson guitar uh, with, with, uh, with Les Paul, uh, it was um, uh, uh, the, the, the idea of having multiple pickups with multiple tone controls. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And then this evolved into very dramatic tonal changes mm -hmm. from the electric guitar experts of the late 60s and mid 60s like Eric Clapton and uh, Jimmy Page, Jeff Beck, and, yeah. the, and the, uh, the, the migration of the British movement into American music. How did the Impressionist era from 1905 to 1915 play a role? Well, it's kind of a personal experience, Yvonne. When I was, uh, uh, my background's engineering. I'm pretty much an uh, empirical kind of guy and really didn't pay much attention to art history or uh, uh, those cultural elements other than sort of the uh, normal historical uh, 
um, lessons that I would learn in school. Yeah. And in 1985 was my first trip to Paris, and I had the good fortune to visit the Jeux de Pomme. And the, there was a, a comprehensive collection of the Impressionists in the Jeux de Pomme. And I noticed this consistency of, of one style of painting to the next. And we were looking at the Degas, the Manet, the Monet, uh, Renoir, so many of these great artists of that period. And as I was noting the, the dates on, on, these, uh, on these paintings, I realized this was a great concentration of time. And, as, and I looked into it more, realizing that this was a great crucible in Paris of creativity, mm -hmm. not just in, uh, in art, but in literature, uh, in music to some extent. And I thought that this period of time very much was similar to 1965 to 1975. We take that little snapshot in musical history, the world changed. You know, we had the Vietnam War, we had yeah. uh, the Civil Rights Movement, mm -hmm. uh, the Beatles had come to America, mm -hmm. all of that had changed. Mm -hmm. uh, we had that series of assassinations which devastated the country. We had the resignation of Richard Nixon. The Vietnam War ended. All of those things happened in that very short period of time. And what happened on the music scene? The music scene had uh, the evolution of Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan's impact in poetry was profound, impacting motion pictures, certainly impacting music. Well, thank you so much. This is Yvonne Cloutier uh, reporting for Sun City Anthem uh, TV, Anthem Alive.